Hey, what's up? It's your girl Sequoia, Silicon Valley tech editor for Black Enterprise, and I am super excited today because we are sitting here with Jessica Matthews. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for being here. So I have heard so much about your product, Uncharted Play. Yes. Please tell us a little more about Happy that. Happy to. So yeah. Uncharted Play is an energy company pretty simple and we're a renewable energy company our renewable energy of source is kinetic energy or the energy of motion mm. and where we started is with play products that's why we're called uncharted play for now okay we might be I'm not gonna announce anything yet but we might be making some name changes but we started out making energy generating soccer balls energy generating jump ropes like what you see here okay. that literally harness the energy of motion, the energy of play, literally as the rope is turning the handles, we have our technology in each handle and that harnesses the energy and stores the energy and then you can use it to power things like lights or cell phone chargers and what we do now is take that same technology that's in things like the pulse jump rope nice, and figure out how we can put it into everything that moves. So we created this platform called MORE. Okay. MORE is actually an acronym. It stands for Motion Based Off Grid Renewable Energy. Mm -hmm. And essentially that's our system for affordably and efficiently integrating our technology into everything around us so it can be turned into a source of power. From speed bumps and roads that people drive on to floor panels and walkways uh, or basketball courts or tennis courts to even the things that we're using in that space from strollers to cricket balls, wow. what have you. <laughs> if it's moving, there's actually power. There's p power being lost when we get up and sit down. Mm. And so ultimately it's like, how do you create a technology that can be put into everything affordably and allow us to capture that lost power? That's so cool. And we know that you're a dual citizen. Yes, dual citizen of Nigeria and the United States. And that is a huge part of, I think, why I'm here. Mm. Um, I was really fortunate growing up to spend a lot of time in Nigeria. Uh, that's where my most of my family lives. Okay. That's where my father lives. So I would go at least once a year, if not a few times a year. And I saw something, a lot of things that we take for granted here in the U.S. that were just clearly in um, dire need. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing for me was the lack of reliable electricity access. Okay. I realized very early that it had nothing to do with the socioeconomics of it, right. but more about the infrastructure. That mm -hmm. whether you were growing up in the village or if you were in the big cities, there just was no reliable system to get clean power. Either you would honestly just bring out a diesel generator or a kerosene lamp to keep things going as little, best as you could. Okay. But those things are horrible for the environment and horrible for the people in the room. In fact, living with a kerosene lamp is like smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. I yeah, did not know that. Yeah, it's 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 bad. It's really wow. bad. And so for me, you know, people ask me, how did you get into energy? And I'm like, well, my family needed it. And when I'm in Nigeria, I needed it. <laughs> like real. that was real serious. Yeah. Like, and so that that perspective, those observations, like I believe that that kind of is like the mother of invention. Like right. you, you need to have the experiences, you need to have the pain point and understand it intimately to be able to start to address it in a very intimate and meaningful way. Um, and yeah, I wanted to not necessarily solve the energy problem, mm -hmm. but figure out how to get more people to realize that we had a problem and that we could all be playing a role in the solution. Right. Because my, my own cousins, I, I remember when I was uh, 17 and I was at my aunt's wedding and as expected, we had lost power. Wow. Um, and so we brought out a diesel generator just to keep the festivities going just in that room. And the fumes were bothering me so much and I was used to it, we had done this before, but for some odd reason this day, the fumes were bothering me so much that I started to complain. And my cousins, guys in their early to mid 20s, we're just like, don't worry, you'll get used to it. <laughs> you're like, exactly. but I feel like I'm dying. Exactly. I was like, so one, you're asking me to get used to dying. And right. I, I, I refuse. <laughs> like, that's like not, I'm 17. But I think what was even more disheartening was that clearly they had gotten used to dying. Mm. These are men in their 20s that you see the world as their oyster, everything as an opportunity. And they're like, the solution is to pretend like there isn't a problem. Wow. They couldn't imagine that there would be any type of innovation that would come forward, any type of public-private partnership. They couldn't imagine it. And so starting first with play, it was like, how do you take something that's beautiful about the way we see passion, the way we see hope in our lives? And for me, that started first with the soccer ball, the energy generating soccer ball, because 
where I did see my cousin show so much passion and hope was on the soccer field. Okay. Um, you know, it's the most popular sport in the world. Right. It's a sport that's often played without even a soccer ball. Mm -hmm. And I have cousins who are horrible at soccer who still really had a lot of high hopes about what they could accomplish on the right, field. Right, that's great. So I was like, why can't you take that same belief in yourself and apply it to the rest of your lives? And mm -hmm. so why not start with play and using play as a way to kind of break down people's barriers um, and show people a more tangible, accessible form of energy. Right. Um, one that where they play a role and they have agency. And that's where we started. Um, gosh, that was when I was 19 years old. I'm now 29. Wow. So I've been doing this for 10 years. I put in more than my 10,000 hours, <laughs> as Malcolm Gladwell would say. Yeah. And I realized, okay, like, you know, I don't know where we're gonna go in the next 10 years, but I do know why I'm doing this and who I'm doing this for. And that's gonna be my guiding light in making decisions. So first it was developing the socket ball. Then I realized that girls needed something, not that the jump rope is for girls or boys, or nor the socket, but we saw that in the work that we were doing in refugee camps, that girls at the age of 12 aren't allowed to play outside because there seem to be too tempting to the boys. Interesting. I first said, well, it sounds like the boys should be put inside. Right. <laughs> no one listened to that. Um, and these were actually in some of the refugee camps that we were working in on the Syrian border. Oh, wow. um, so there were religious things behind this as well. Yep. So I said, well, let's create the jump rope because this is something that's a little bit easier for the girls to grasp onto. And the guys will still want to jump towards it right. because it's tech. but. Usually the girls can double dutch this a little bit better. <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> then from there I realized, you know, we're inspiring so many people about where energy can come from and they're now looking at everything that moves around them in a different way. And they're asking, what about, what about? And we need to come up with an efficient, scalable way to tell them that their what about is about to be a, a, a reality. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we created the, the more platform. And I'm actually really excited. Um, this year, we're gonna be deploying our first new products. And it seems simple as an energy uh, harnessing speed bump, the more speed bump. But again, like every single time someone drives a car and drives over a speed bump, we're gonna be generating kilowatts of power wow. for Wi-Fi beacons, street lights, data sensors, tra traffic lights, everything that people need to, to live within the city. That is so amazing. And we've seen your trajectory, maybe not from 19, but yeah. recently, and we saw that you raised a substantial amount of money. Yes. And you were not in Silicon Valley. No, I was not. I mean, you know, once I realized that we had to do more than play, and we had to create a real energy platform and basically become an energy company, I knew I needed energy money. Right. Um, you know, and like, and there's only so many ways you can go about it. So we raised a, a large Series A, it was $7 million. Yeah. It's actually still the largest Series A that any black woman's ever raised wow. in history. Um, and we went ahead and spent the last two years on R&D. And it sounds crazy, especially as women, as uh, women of color, we, there's a discomfort in turning away from the thing that works to, to expand. Right. Because it feels like, you know, we're looking at gift horse in the mouth. But that's what the white boys are doing. All the time. They are raising All the money the and then just, you know, working on their stuff for years. Yes. And then like one year they start making money and then they go on IPO. Right. And we're out here profitable from day one. Right. Can't raise, you know, you look at Project Diane stats, we, we, we can't raise more than a million dollars. I think right. there's only been 15 of us. Exactly. And so I knew what we had to build and what we had to do. And it's been really exciting to see how we can build a strong technology company with strong IP. Because that's not usually what people talk about. Like, I've been the tech lead for my team for so long, and I mm -hmm. knew what we could do if we were focused on that. And we have academics from around the world, the leaders in kinetic and mechanical systems, who doubt us at first, and three months later, we're beating their theoretical numbers by five times. Wow. And they're, they want to join the team. Right, of course. So, <laughs> so now, you know, we're, we have a kind of a suite of products for more that we're going to be deploying after two years of hardcore R&D, awesome. an energy harnessing speed bump, energy harnessing sidewalks, energy harnessing roads. Over the next two years, you're going to be basically seeing all around Africa, people rethinking the way they drive and the way they walk and the role that that's playing and getting the clean energy that they need. And then it's gonna be even more exciting because we're, once we have covered everything that's happening on the ground, we can build up from there. We can license all of our technology for consumer products and it's kind of like the ground is the phone and now we can get other people to build the apps using our um, using our IP and so 
I'm really excited to really build a uh, the new kind of energy company, the kind of energy company that you want to kick it with, you know? I love it. And you've mentioned being in Africa. Do you plan to yeah. scale and how does that look for you guys? Yes. So we're starting first in Africa. Um, definitely wanted to start in emerging markets because 50% of the GDP will be coming out of emerging markets by 2020. Mm. Um, and it, so it's kind of like you got to go where things are about to pop off. Right. For Also, there's a huge need. You know, here in the U.S., maybe we're paying like 10, 15 cents max for our uh, electricity per right. kilowatt hour. Yeah. In Somalia, they're paying over a dollar. Wow. Um, you know, in Rwanda, they're paying 65 cents. So we can produce, a, uh, produce systems that are generating real electricity at maybe 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. There's a huge opportunity. There's a huge value proposition. Right. So while it may not be the most affordable solution here yet here in the United States, it's something that they're dying for. Yeah. Um, in these markets. And we, we see a great example of being the leapfrogging that we have that we saw happen with mobile technology. Um, cell phone towers growing up all around the continent because landlines just couldn't scale right. the same way that the yeah. grid couldn't scale. Mm -hmm. So first Africa, and then we expand all across emerging markets, and then we double back and look at what we can do even like at LaGuardia Airport. That's my airport, and I, I want <laughs> You're like, to Let's put, fix it. I want to fix it. I got some stuff for it. <laughs> Love it. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for sharing everything that you have going on with Uncharted Play. We look so forward to everything that you have going on in the future, and we support you here at Black Enterprise. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.